In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create a nice underwater scene like this using Blender. We have created this in EV, not even cycles. And as you can see, the quality is still good. There are four steps to create this animation. So in the first step, we have created an ocean floor like this, with some rocks scattered all over the ocean bed. We have added some suitable materials as well. And at this stage, you can add anything you like to be here, like we have added these two skulls to add some thrill to this scene. You can place these rocks manually in random positions on the seabed, but we have used a geometry node setup to scatter these rocks randomly. We have also created a separate tutorial on this geometry node, and the tutorial link is given below. Now we'll create some bubbles for this scene that will appear from the ocean bed and rise above the seawater like this. In order to create those bubbles, we need to first create a model for one single bubble, which we have already created beforehand, and it has got a transparent material. But this model will be completely hidden. We need to use two other spheres to create the actual bubbles. In fact, we'll create two sets of bubbles. First, this sphere 2 is placed here under the ocean bed, and it has got a small radius. And this sphere 1 is hidden inside the left eye of the skull. The bubbles will rise from here above the seawater. In order to create those bubbles, we have to add a particle system with these settings and then bake it. We have also added a velocity factor here. So if we take a closer look, we'll see that a velocity is added in the Z dimension since we want the bubbles to rise against the gravity force. So if we now play this animation, we'll see that the bubbles are moving up and you can always customize their speed and other things in the particle settings. We have covered this in another tutorial with step-by-step -step details on how to create bubbles. You can get the tutorial link below in the video description and watch it later, so we'll skip this part here. Let's now go to the rendered view mode to see how it will looks. So the bubbles got the same look and feel and the material of our model object, and it will look even better when we add the sea. But let's first add some caustics for the ground. The caustics will create beautiful shadows of the ocean water or the waves. In order to create caustics on any object, we need to create a node tree like this with some basic nodes, and the most important node among all this is this Voronoi texture. Just for the ease of use, we have packed this into a node group called Add Caustics, and you can download this node tree from the link given below in the video description. Once ready, let's go to the viewport, and let's say we want to add caustics to this ocean bed or the floor, so select the object here, and then again go back to the shader editor. You can have any material like this for your target object, but look for the primary BSDF node in this node tree and take its base color, we have to add caustics just before this base color. So in the add menu, under group, we have our add caustics node. We will place it before the base color. This node group comes with an input value. It helps you to customize the effect. This is called scale factor, and it controls the size of the caustics that we will see on the material. Let's go for five here. It depends on the size of your object, so you can customize it as you wish. Now we'll get the caustics or the bright rays from the running water falling on this ground, but the rays are at the fixed location we want it to be dynamic, so we need to make one small change in our node tree for the caustics, and we have to go back to the shader editor for this change. Then go inside the add caustics node group, we need to animate this W factor in the Voronoi texture, so right click here and select the option called add driver. In the add driver panel, remove this variable field, then we have to modify this expression field correctly. It will be frame divided by some number like 250, or you can use any other value as well to control the animation speed of the caustics. We can see that it has got a purple color, and if we go to the last frame, we'll see a different number because the driver is animating this field. Let's then go back to the viewport, and to verify the result, we can simply run the animation. So we see a dynamic change for caustics, which is creating a beautiful effect of the running water on the floor. Please remember to add the caustics to these rocks, and also on these skulls or anything that you scatter on the ocean bed. In the third step, we have to create the water or the ocean, and for that, we have to encompass everything within another object. So let's go to the Add menu, and we can add a UV sphere or an icosphere. Then we have to change these scale factors so that we get a large object, and our entire scene should be covered by this giant sphere. We have to also add a suitable material for this sphere, so let's create a new material. And by default, we get these two nodes, but we can get rid of this principal BSDF. Then we have to create a new node tree for the material. You can pause the video here and take a picture of this node tree, we have used a volume scatter node here, along with a volume absorption node. And please remember that this entire node tree has to be connected to this volume socket, not to the surface. We have also used a node here called camera data, which is passing through a map range node, and then through a color ramp node. But please note that these two handles have been interchanged in the color ramp. So this left side handle has the white color instead of black, 
and this right side handle has actually got the black color. Let's now go to the camera view mode in the viewport, and we can also turn on the render view mode. But everything is now looking just white, because the settings on this map range are not correct, we have to rectify them. So this minimum value can be 20 or 25, and similarly this max value can be increased 100. This is dependent on the distance of the camera from the center of the scene, so whatever values we set in these two fields will control the depth and the density of the ocean water. We can see that this view distance output socket is connected to this map range node. So these values will depend on the dimension or the length and width of your scene, and also on the position of your camera with respect to the center of the scene. But we have too much darkness here, so we can reduce the density of this volume absorption node. It can be say 0.5. Please note that this volume scatter node will add light into the scene, and this volume absorption will take out the light. Let's also change the density of this volume scatter to 0.2, to get a balance between the light and the darkness. And one more thing here, we can also change this last field in the volume scatter to 0.9, in order to get a more realistic balance between the foreground and the background. And the ocean color can be customized from here. If we change this volume absorption color, we'll get a different color of the ocean. Let's undo this color change, but you can select whatever color you wish. Please remember that you also need a powerful light, like we have this sunlight and we have raised its power to 100. Then, in the render properties, scroll down to the volume section. Here you can change the volume resolution to a higher value for a better quality, but it takes more time to render. In the last step, we will add some god rays that are usually visible underwater. In order to do that, we have used a simple trick. We have created a plane like this, hidden from the camera because it is placed above the scene. And we made several small size holes on this plane, so the sunlight will pass through these holes, and they'll create those god rays in the ocean. The material of this plane is set up cleverly. Probably you can also guess, we have used a transparent shader with a principal BSDF with a mix factor of 0.9. It will allow sufficient light for the scene, but more light will pass through these holes for the god rays. We will also add a motion for this plane along this direction together with the animation of the scene. So for frame number one, we will keyframe its X and Y values. Then we'll go to the last frame of the scene, and let's move this plane by a small distance, not very far away, and we'll insert a keyframe for its new location values. So with this complete setup, we went ahead and rendered this scene, but we realized that one more thing can be changed, just to be on the safer side. In this world tab, you can set a matching color for the world. Although it won't be visible through the ocean, but just in case the ocean is not dense enough, it will cover up the background. We have created this entirely in EV. In fact, it may be difficult to get this effect in cycles. So it's easy, it will render faster. And now you can also create an underworld scene. Please let me know if you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.